Now, a bullet is fired horizontally with a speed of 200 meters per second from top of the cliff above sea level. Show that will strike the sea level a distance 2,000 meters from the foot of the cliff. So, let's draw yourself a little diagram. Uh, I'll use a, use a rectangle to represent the bullet. So, okay. Now, this rectangle, initially you're going to be fired uh, in this direction here. What's going to happen over time is your eventually gravity is going to take advantage and you're just going to keep going to keep going downwards until eventually you hit level ground. All right, this time. So you're going to hit level ground. So, <clears throat> something like that. Okay. Now, you begin at the point zero uh, four ninety. Ever cool with that? Now zero four ninety. All right. Do we do minus four ninety or do we do? Yeah, let's do minus four ninety. That worked out nicely. All right. What I'm going to argue is take this as your new zero zero, if you will. Okay. So reaffirm that now as zero zero. What would be the y value of the point down here then? Minus 490 below, isn't it? So we'll try it this way. If you start off at 0, 0, you'd be minus 490 below. You can have a system like this if you want, okay? Now, <clears throat> what do we think about the, uh, the x value? I'm not allowed, now this, I had a discussion with my other fifth years the other day. I'm not allowed to use 2000. I have to prove it's 2000. You get what I'm saying? So I have to prove that's 2000. So you can't use it as part of your question. You have to actually show that's 2000. All right, let's start off with, uh, we have four formulas, Vx, Vy, Sx, and Sy. Okay, what's our Vx, lads? I would say 200 to the right. You? Now, we're using phi equals u plus at. 200 to the right. Is there any acceleration in the x direction? No. What's the initial y velocity? Zero. Is there any acceleration in the y direction? At, isn't it? Which would be minus, it's going downwards, so it'll be gravity times final, right? So minus. 9.8 SX, anybody? 200 meters per second multiplied by the time you're traveling. Or you could use UT plus a half AT squared and realize that the, uh, there's no acceleration, so you don't need to worry about it. What about S? 0T, half to 9.8 to get, 4.9. And then t squared, yep. And then let's get rid of the zero big. Doesn't need to exist, All right? Now, what can we say about the time of flight? The time of flight is the time it takes to hit down here. What can we say about it? S y equals minus four ninety. S y equals minus four ninety. And then we can say minus 4.9 t squared equals minus 490. Uh, I'll just go and work out nicely. t squared equals 100. t equals 10. Is that okay? Now, can insert it into the sx equation. And then what would sx be? Huh? Uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, 200 times 10, which is 2,000 meters. So, this is an easy question provided you do one thing. If you start off at a height above ground, always make that point zero, zero. If you fall 
at a height above the height you started at, just make it a negative. That makes sense. And that's the trick to that one. Works out nicely every time. Provided you remember to start off at zero, zero, and just use a negative displacement. And it comes, yeah, easy. All right, so that's nine. Uh, we'll go for 11 now. Okay. A particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane with initial velocity 100i plus 98j. Point of time when I reach a height of this much above the plane. Alrighty, so you obviously show your particle. So say times plural, doesn't it? Times plural implies it's not the maximum height, so I'll just go down and back down again. Now, let's put this line here. What does that line represent? Of course, 70.4. This one can be a T1 the first time it hits it on the way up. And T2 can be the second time it hits it on the way down. We're looking for two times, so obviously means we're probably going to be using a uh, huh? quadratic uh, uh, UT plus a half AT squared, more than likely. Uh, so let's begin. 3x, everybody. What is it? 100, no acceleration behind it. PY, 98. But you're fighting gravity, plus 8t, but in this time be minus 9.8t. All right, sx, just lob a t onto the end. It's 100 multiplied by the time you're traveling at that velocity. No acceleration. And then the second one. The way I do it is I always look at phi y. I always throw a t behind the first one. I always half the second one, and then just throw another t in behind it. And you get much faster at it. Okay, I just did a u t plus a half a t squared. Okay, but well, it's much quicker to just look at v y and do it like that. Now, <clears throat> all right, what's what are we going to do here, guys? Yeah, yeah. S y equals four hundred seventy point four. Bring it all to one side. Uh, is everything in this list divisible by 4.9? It is, is it? All right. Uh, could somebody tell me what uh, 98 divided by 4.9 is? This is 20, is it? And uh, the last one? What? 96. Uh, 8 and 12. So t equals 12 and t equals 8. Happy days. The speed at these times to the nearest meters per second. Now we can be a bit lazy here, can't we? What do we know about symmetrical graphs? The speed on the way up should be the same as the way down. So technically you only have to do one of them. We'll do both of them just to be thorough, but you should only have to do one of them, right? Now, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, let, let phi 8 be the velocity at 8 seconds and phi 12 be the velocity at 12 seconds. Is that okay? Straight away, we both know it's 100i. How do I know that? Never changes, does it? So, and I'm about to make a mistake, but well, I'm going to ask you guys to pull me up on it in a minute, okay? Now, next thing, uh, we're going to use phi y. So 98 take away 9.8 times uh, 8, and we have the answer for that. Yeah, which is 19.6 uh, on the way up. And what about the other one? If we replace that with 12. All right, so we've, we've established that both speeds are there. Or sorry, both velocities are the same. I haven't got full marks, so I've left three on the table. Anybody care to tell me where? What do you think? What? Yeah, I have to combine them into like the hypotenuse for the speed. What I have here is the velocity. I don't have the speed. So we go for 100, 19.6, and then call this V. And t squared equals uh, 100 squared plus uh, 19.6 squared. And then somebody just 
Yeah, I screwed up. On your hand? On your tail. There's that to the nearest our head. Oh, nearest me. All right. Well, two of you guys. All right, and we're done.